Bill Burr's here. <laughs> Did you see the complaints about the Irishman? I didn't even want to ask you about it. <laughs> I didn't want to. I don't. I don't. I have zero complaints. I just wish it was another two and a half hours longer. Someone had the audacity to complain that Anna Paquin didn't have enough lines. <laughs> Who's that? <laughs> like someone on some blogger. It was like Anna Paquin didn't speak enough in the movie. Yeah, it's so stupid. <laughs> It's like, well, it wasn't about her. How did, it wasn't her hey, story. Hey, could Jimmy Hoffa, you know, <laughs> say less so this blogger can get in there? Yeah. It's like, that's not the story. You don't get to complain about Martin Scorsese, the number of lines people have no, in you, Actually, you do. You do, and then everybody picks up on it because somebody's complaining, and it looks like it could be a, a controversy. So then they just they blow it into a brush fire, and they just they just keep gassing up things that— um, I guess people care in that they like watching people argue and debate and some people getting in trouble. But as far as people, tr- like, that's what people truly care about, I, I don't think it is. It's like rubbernecking or something. But it's also like, okay, Charlie's Angels didn't do well. Book Smart, which is directed by a woman and starring women, didn't do, it was a good movie. No one saw it. So if the people that were complaining about it would just go see the movies <laughs> that women know, do speak funny? in, maybe they would actually <laughs> yep. could solve this problem. I do a bit about that where they bitch about women in the NFL. It's like, what about the WNBA where there's like 30 <laughs> people, right. 30 people at every fucking game? Why don't, why don't you go support that? You don't actually want to buy tickets. You just want to complain that other people aren't buying tickets. Yeah, or the, yeah, we should go we should be at the top of that fucking game. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, it's insane. It's an, it's a very, uh, but I think it's, di- I think it, it's just, it's, it died of its own weight. And I even, right. I even saw like a lot of the, you know, the people championing the flag, even they're trying to distance themselves. That fucking happens when you get old like me. You see that happen so many times. These trends and people just jump on them. Mm-hmm. And they're riding that horse, and they're at the front <laughs> carrying the flag. And then all of a sudden, they see the cliff coming, and then they just try to be like, whoa, 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 whoa. I wasn't a part of it. Well, what's up with those guys, huh? They're rollerblading? What's that? You know, I always use rollerblading as an, as an example, that everybody did it, and then it was that one homophobic joke, and then everybody acted like they never did it. And it was like, <laughs> so and, they, and they sold a zillion of them. I loved rollerblading. I played rollerblade hockey. I had a great fucking time. I would do it again. So fun. I would do it again if I wasn't so old. Mm -hmm. Because what killed rollerblading for me was the the protection that they had was so fucking uncomfortable. And dorky. Well, if you wore like the knee pads, right, it would just make the back of your legs sweat profusely. The the knee pads are what would make me fall. Yeah. You can't actually get anything going. I used to do it when I lived in Philadelphia. I would rollerblade every day. I'm seeing it. You're acting it I out. I was so I, good you know at what? it. You're painting a picture. <laughs> I, can, I can see what's happening here. Um, first, I just want to um, say uh, a couple. I like to plug up front. You know what I mean? Plug up front. People like to bury the plugs at the very end when people have I already. do that. Stupid. You know? Stupid. F is for family. It's on. Season four. I um, love it so much. Oh, thank you. And I have a question about when you, when you were animating... What were the conversations about? What's the skin look like? What do the features look like? Oh yeah, that you, that takes weeks. It, you spent like a, we spent like weeks on noses and chins and <laughs> eyes. Well, what you have to do is you have to see what's out there, mm-hmm. and then you have to come up with something different. You literally have to create your own race of animated people. And it's like, all right, the Simpsons are yellow. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Uh, South Park is doing the minimal thing, right. and, and little and, eyes. Uh, you know all that stuff on. Um, you know, we looked at a lot of stuff on uh, what's this? A robot chicken. And, I love robot and, chicken. And uh, um, the the show Aisha's on there, the spy show. I've only watched a zillion episodes of it. I, my brain's the worst. <laughs> you know, you know the, the the the. Can someone pull it up? That's why we have a monitor. Aisha you know, you know, animated show. Aisha Tyler's. Everyone's on... running around panicking, huh? Archer. 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 Everyone's panicking because yeah. you're here. I've never seen people move around so much while we're recording. Oh. Everyone's just moving around. Yeah, my shit and <laughs> moving jokes cameras. precede me. Um, <laughs> None of this is recording. Yeah, so we just we just like looked at a zillion things like that, and then we tried to come up, you know, and it was all trying to get Frank. Frank was the sort of the centerpiece. It's like we couldn't make him too angry. He had to look like you know, somebody trying. You know, because the way <laughs> yeah, I was going to yeah, be yeah, screaming yeah. and yelling and stuff, he he wouldn't come off as like too sympathetic. So, yeah, it started with that. But, you know, speaking of The Simpsons, you know, uh, Mike Price from yeah, The Simpsons, yeah, brilliant. You know, co-creator. And uh, so he's guided us through pretty much all the white water of the uh, first three seasons. Peter Billingsley, Vince Vaughn, all of those guys, uh, Victoria Vaughn, all of those people over at um, 
Wild West. So, right. you know, who Vince has been. I just sort of surrounded of myself with people who knew what the hell they were doing. It's also <laughs> like watching animation is just so soothing for me now because everything is I hate the word triggering. But you watch any show now and you're like, ah, well, didn't he have an allegation or ah, God, am I la-? like it's just like everything's so loaded now. So what you do is you just don't watch the news, really social media news. That's right. And you can enjoy uh, Bill Cosby's entire back catalog. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm kidding. I'm just, I mean, but I mean, you don't you yeah. don't get into every fucking thing that's going. Like I tapped so out true. of politics. You I have to. I tapped out of no that. No idea what's going on. Where, uh, but you then once you push through that, then you have to then I think try to do something in your world that helps somebody out. Right. Like, you know, right, you right. help you one or whatever, if you can, homeless people, public schools or something that you you can pick up on. So I, I am against just saying, well, you know, politics are crazy. You know, it doesn't make a difference what color tie they're wearing, blah, 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 blah. It's like, fine. I agree with all of that. But like after that, then, so what, you, what are you just not going to do anything and just yeah. look out for yourself? Yeah. So that's kind of what they're doing. I, I realized that I was kind of doing that. So, uh, but I, I definitely do a lot of, uh, me TV is another big one for me. Yeah, Me just, TV. I just watch memorable entertainment television. Don't even know what it is. You should know what it is. You're still young and have your life ahead of you. <laughs> it's, it's all the shows that I watched when I was a kid. Some of which that were already ten and twenty years old. It's like Rockford Files, yeah. Kojak, Gunsmoke. Uh, you know, Peter Gunn, uh, Seventy Seven Sunset Strip. Yeah, oh, yeah, Beverly Maddox, Hillbillies, Beverly Hillbillies. Buck Rogers, Cannon's a Carol great Burnett. one. The original Old Charlie's stuff. Angels. There's Columbo. A Columbo's a great one. Different strokes. Doris Day Show, if I could find one that was on, I would watch that. Gilligan's Island. The problem is now people want to go up and tear these apart. That's a traditional gender role. That implies women no, they should don't. only be in People the don't. A select few group of people. Like 30 bloggers. 30 bloggers can can move the needle on. So Mannix is a great one. I said Mannix. Mannix. Uh, even Matlock. I loved Matlock growing up. Matlock is great. All of those Murder things. Murder, she wrote. Say by the Eastwood, Bell. Eastwood, Rawhide. I think this That's is it. the first TV um, role. So I just sit there Wonder and I Woman. watch that and there's like there's no global warming. The problem is Wonder Woman never did much for me because I always felt like Wonder Woman did less than the average just woman. Yeah, but she was hot. She didn't have to. <laughs> <laughs> Batman's sure. buying her drinks, you know. Oh, it works. I remember looking at Wonder Woman and being like, my single mom is doing more than you just did in that episode. Well, she got her pilot's license. <laughs> She's instrument rated. Right. She's up there in the clouds. You got to give her that. Uh, that's a big move for a chick back in the 70s. You have your helicopter pilot's license, I hear. Yes, I do. Does that not scare you? Uh, yeah, it's terrifying. But it's something that once you get past the, the fear, it's fucking incredible. Right. And it's an unbelievable privilege or whatever. But, like, uh, you know, I'm very careful with it. So um, Right up here is where the LAFD lands to refill water when they're putting fires out. And mm-hmm. I go up there and watch them. And it brings tears to my eyes to watch these is guys all the lit. dirt getting blown? Think, yeah, that's probably it. <laughs> well, that's probably I can't it. fly. I only got a couple hundred hours. I, I don't know what I'm doing. But those guys are fucking amazing. So um, it's a hobby, yeah. Let's talk about Paper Tiger. It's out. I'm sure you've already seen it, especially if you're listening to this show. Jessica Curson, you're producing her special December uh, 6th that yep, comes out, Comedy right? Central. She's f- hilarious. Yeah, she's one of those people. I love her. I was saying, like, there's some comics, you know, that you really have to have a game plan after they go on. And she's one of them where it's just like, hey, I was going to try and some new shit. I think I got to go with some proven <laughs> shit first and then uh, play with the crowd a little bit and try to make them try to forget her. But she's just um, she's she's the real deal, and she she didn't skip any steps. Nope. And she went all the way around the track. Yep, went all the way around the track. So she's ready to go. So we're expecting uh, big things out of that. And um, you know the specials that we've done. You know we did one with Paul Verzi, and we did one with Ian Edwards, and and now Jessica. And uh, Paul Verzi is now selling out comedy clubs, which is so great. Uh, I do miss working with him on the road, but I, I do, and I, I'm obviously super happy for him that, you know, just seeing somebody make it like that is is awesome. And plus, I love Paul. I always said, Paul, I want to see you get money just because I want to see what you're going to buy. Bye. Yeah. <laughs> There's yeah. so many people that I'm like, I yeah. can't wait to like, get rich because I know you're going to buy like an alligator. Something like or that. Or something stupid. Yeah. <laughs> we all would have made, I don't know. It's, it's yeah. Yeah. Just, <laughs> 
It's uh, just funny. I love that you did this. I mean, you produced my special. Yes. And you guys were, it was such a different experience. Like, I don't think people understand that most comedians, they work their asses off. Uh, they get ready to shoot a special. And then everyone producing their special, like, is a lawyer. Yeah. Or like a trust fund kid. Or they rip you off. Or they rip. I have been stolen from so much, lied to. Someone, oh, yeah. Someone caught there's, on. There's some characters out there. And they take advantage of comedians because comedians, for me, I'm just so happy to be there. And I didn't know shit about production. I didn't know where people were stealing. I didn't. Yeah, I got screwed on, on a, my earlier ones uh, as far as like uh, budgetary stuff. Yep. And then when I found out what was going on, I was just like, oh, these people are finding out what my budget is and then budgeting it to like within a nickel. That's right. And um, I don't know if they how they find out or they give people kickbacks for letting let me know and I'll, I'll throw you five grand if you mm-hmm. find out what his budget is and man we're fucking you know and they just just stuff like that it's really super super shady i knew another guy who was driving people you know towards a failing streaming channel no, because no. yeah he was getting like 50 grand a pop see so yeah to drive him over <laughs> did i just make was that right yeah yeah and he so he had a side everybody's got a fucking side deal side this is a deal it, it it is what it is. So we wanted to create a business where um, you know, like a, like a place where comics could go, own their podcast. Yep. They could come have a vision for a special. We try to make it happen, and uh, you know, we don't have that. You know, we own everything that you do. And yeah, yeah. That. I mean, we still have to make our money, but like we we're we're not doing that. Uh, yeah. You know, old school record deal kind of shit that they do around here still so i'd say just follow all things comedy their instagram and just watch whatever comic because it's bill and al magical picked them and they're going to be good <laughs> just uh you're going to be at i always love this because you're gonna be just for laughs in montreal i mean it's probably already Am sold I? out yeah in february you're going to vancouver that, oh, I was just for laughs to me is in July in Montreal. Yeah, that's right. No, this is Vancouver. They oh, the one, Vancouver they one. They went in February. I always love these comedy festivals because you find out uh, your value in the business based on how big your name is mm-hmm. on the flyer. <laughs> oh, I know. How big your picture is and all that. <laughs> you always find out because there's always a list of comedians' names and what row you're on. Let's that's you know not a happy. You shouldn't do that. That's not a happy trip oh, because um, then, then you're going to see somebody else. Oh, I've been doing it longer. Yeah, than yeah. Person. Why is why is their name bigger on this fucking poster? Actually, Vancouver. There's a, a guy I know up there that flies uh, helicopters. And last time I went up there, I got to fly one. Unfortunately, it was like an overcast day, so I didn't get to quite see the incredible beauty up there. So I'm going to try to. Vancouver, do that. I think, is the most gorgeous place on the planet. Yeah, it's expensive as shit. Yeah. Everyone's um. Of it. Everyone of all the people I've had on so far, which have not been a lot, everyone was the most worried about this appearance. Everyone's like, "He's not gonna like your chairs. He's not gonna like your table." I got the <laughs> worst fucking like reputation. Every ah, he's gonna be angry. He's gonna be all of that. I don't know. Maybe that's the vibe I'm putting out. <laughs> so I cross my arms and get all closed up. <laughs> no, I think that just I think people assume I, I get this too, where people are like, "Why are you so angry?" And I'm like, "Dude." You're seeing me on stage where I'm letting out all of my anger. That's where I let it out. You know, it's funny. You've never come across as angry to me. Really? On stage, yeah. you don't think? No, I just thought it was funny. I didn't think it was like, but I mean, it's also me saying, I don't think that's angry. <laughs> <laughs> Comparatively. No, but I don't, I don't, you're not like a yeller. Really? When you're on stage. Oh, I, mean, I haven't seen you in a People minute. People think I complain a lot. People are like, you're so angry, you complain a lot. I'm like, that's, we're just, that's comedy. I mean, that's just what I'm doing. Like, I'm not... Eh. Do do people really think that, or did a couple of people say that? Yeah, that that word "people" is really it's, thrown around. Well, see, I love that you say that. People are saying it. I can't say it. It's, you get two comments. It, I love when everyone is like on their Instagram and like, you know, a lot of people want me to post my skincare routine. I'm like, you want to do it, yeah. and you just took one person, and you're pretending everyone wants it. But no, I think oh, in yeah. general, I I've gotten that feedback over the years, and maybe I'm sensitive to it because I do know that I have anger problems but i actually don't think i sh- you know you only sort of respond to criticism if you deeply in some way kind of agree with it that's the only time it bothers me i don't think oh i think someone can just say something really mean and hurtful that's and you true. didn't think that about yourself yeah. the, fuck all it, it this this human beings are way too complex for like just one one thing like that and my wife tried some shit on that <laughs> to me the other night i said something and then she said some stupid fucking expression <laughs> Pet dog bites or something. I didn't know what the fuck it meant. It was just this way of going like, oh, because you reacted to the fucked up thing that I said. It's it's on you. It's like, no, no, it's still on you. <laughs> right back at you over the fucking net. <laughs> yeah. We had a funniest fucking argument the other day. <laughs> we were watching Wheel of Fortune and the fucking prize. 
was because uh, they have the worst prize ever. Was it like it was like a fucking shopping spree at Dick's Sporting Goods? <laughs> so we're like, oh, what the fuck? That's you get that on a game show? You can win that at a calling in a radio station. These people are on TV solving puzzles. <laughs> and then she said, ah, you know what? If I, uh... she goes, you know, I wouldn't care if I was on that. I'd just give that to you. <laughs> and I went, what? You fuck you, fucking. I can go to Dick's myself. I don't need your fucking gift certificate. <laughs> And it just, I get so fucking, like, I mean, it was just in a silly way that like she would just be like, can you imagine if I ever did that? You would, you're keeping up with the Kardashians horse shit. I get a fucking, I get dick sporting goods. I just got in a fight with Ben. There's a hoodie next to a fishing rod. <laughs> Some bear spray. Here, here's the Nike shit that didn't work. So it's not at our flagship here's, stores. Here's some Umbro shorts. Yeah. Some irregular Adidas socks. I was just fighting with Benson about this because we're talking about holiday gifts and I don't like gift cards. You don't like don't like them like like don't get me anything. Literally, just don't get me anything. That's how much I don't like gift cards because I always end up going to the place you got me the gift card for spending more than it. And then it ends up costing me money. Oh, oh, I was thinking just getting cash. Cash is is a great. That's what you do. That is such an underrated gift. Cash. $100 $100 cash. I like you. I don't know much about you. You should give Nia cash. It seems for like this will cover it. <laughs> yeah, this feels like. We can be friends for another year. 2046. <laughs> get the fuck out of here. <laughs> it's, it's such a like weird. It feels dirty, but it's all anyone actually wants. I don't like gift cards. What do you do? What are you going to. Um, have you already decided what you're going to get your wife for that holiday? We can't uh, say Christmas. I got, I got in trouble. No, Christmas. <laughs> I actually. I'm Christian. I actually did. I celebrate Christmas. I'm sorry. I was in a writer's, uh, working on a show. Not practicing Christian, though. And an intern complained because I said Merry Christmas. <laughs> I had to go to HR. <laughs> no, it's it's so I don't want you to fucking batshit crazy out there where it's just like, like the, the, the shit that people who haven't done anything with their fucking lives are and calling out. <laughs> These like I just remember coming in when you were in the mailroom. It was just like, yes, sir, no, sir, how yep, are you? Blah, yep. blah, blah, blah. Not saying that was right, but now this thing where the person who built the empire has to crumple to their knees because someone in the fucking mailroom didn't like the mistletoe and has seven followers on Twitter. And yeah, and then and then they, they they can literally ride that to like the ABC morning show. <laughs> and then, then, and what if someone <laughs> kissed me and I didn't want to be kissed? And like the guy, I'm sorry. I, uh, <laughs> yeah. Tell China, put China on hold for that big billion dollar deal. I need to, I need to put this fire out. It's, it's like, uh, but it's also been fun to watch. It is fun to watch. In that, um, all of these so called like powerless people, when they complain, is then you then watch them abuse that power. Yep. And yep, it's yep, just yep, like, yep. oh, they become the you're the person. exact same fucking thing. You're just not up there, and yes. everyone's saying that's like that whole horse shit where they show like. You know, inner city kids and every one of them who's, who's dealing drugs would have been a doctor. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If they grew up in a white neighborhood. It's just like, yeah, or they could have been like some of my piece of shit fucking white people that I know. They could have been, they could have uh, done a predatory bank and <laughs> fucked old people out of their pensions. It's not, you don't automatically become a fucking hero. Like, it's one of those just romanticize. Anybody who's in the mailroom is this fucking saint and anybody who's up top is automatic. And it's just, that's not... The case. There's but, some good people in the mailroom, yep. and there's some absolute pieces of shit. And same thing with people who run companies. That's that, that's what I think. I just feel like we're— Some drug you, dealers would be doctors. <laughs> some, Others, most doctors are drug dealers. Yeah, other, yeah they are, right? <laughs> Basically. Yeah. Bap, bap, bap. Bap, bap, bap. Holiday rush is coming. You need ShipStation. If you sell stuff online, you better get ready with Ship station with more people buying more than ever online before i said that out of order you have to be able to ship orders out quickly duh efficiently duh and affordably but how do you keep track of all those orders i couldn't do it or how do you decide which shipping carrier to use it's a nightmare or how do you know if you're getting the best rapes? Ba, ba, ba. <laughs> Luckily, ShipStation can help they sort this all out just a few clicks you'll be managing orders printing labels Getting those products out the door and delivered for the holidays, bam, bam, what? No problem, okay? If you're selling on Amazon, Etsy, your own website, ShipStation brings all the orders into one thing, interface, making it easy to manage all that. Blessed and highly favored. Blessed and highly favored stuff. Even you can do it from your cell phone. Oh. ShipStation uh, works with all the major carriers, UPS, FedEx, UPS, so you don't have to deal with any nonsense there. Uh, you can compare. You can choose. You can ship. 
Come on, it's the number one choice of online seller. So what are you doing? Are you going to go the number two choice? What are you, a maniac? No, I want to compare and choose. What are you, kind of psychopath? Take the hassle out of holiday shipping. Let ShipStation help you handle it all with ease. Use my offer code Whitney to get a 60-day free trial. Don't use anyone else's offer code. Don't screw me on this. You're going to get two months free of no hassle, stress-free holiday shipping. Bah, bah, bah. Just visit ShipStation.com. Click on the microphone at the top of the page. Type in Whitney if you don't know how to spell it. Can't help you. ShipStation.com. Enter offer code Whitney. ShipStation. Make ship happen. HelloFresh. With HelloFresh, America's number one meal kit, you get easy seasonal Seasonal recipes recipes and pre-measured ingredients ingredients delivered delivered right right to your door. door. And all you have to do do is cook and enjoy. enjoy. (laughs) (laughs) HelloFresh makes cooking delicious meals at home a reality regardless of your comfort level in the kitchen. From step-by-step recipes to pre-measured ingredients, you'll have everything you need to get a wow-worthy dinner on the table in about how many minutes? About 30 minutes. (laughs) Say goodbye to endless grocery store trips and take out food. Food, HelloFresh has you covered. Make deliciousness a part of your week, Benton. Break out of your dinner rut. You're always in a rut, I feel Me, like. my dinner rut? Yeah. Oh. HelloFresh has how many seasonable chef-curated recipes each 20 week? 20-plus. There's That's something... That's more than 20. That's more than 20. <laughs> Heard it here. <laughs> From family recipes to calorie-smart, vegetarian, fun menus like what? Hall of Fame, Kraft Burgers. HelloFresh is more you, fun. You caught me on the calories. I really Stop did. There. I was you like, really, you, you, you I'm blanked. here for that. You really blanked out. HelloFresh has more five-star recipes than any other meal kit. Holy moly. So you know you're going to get something. HelloFresh is the only meal kit I know about. Yeah. Well, I mean, it's for many reasons. Yeah. Nine free meals with HelloFresh. You're going to go to where? HelloFresh.com slash good nine. And use code? Good nine. That's how many free meals? Nine. <laughs> with HelloFresh by going to? HelloFresh.com slash good nine. And use the code good nine. I also uh, didn't hire someone. Is this crazy that... Uh, that you're saying it on mic? <laughs> yes. And if they figure it out and then they sue you. Honest, and then you hear it on a I, podcast? <laughs> I get sued so fucking much at this point. I was interviewing someone and I was like, so what kind of comedy do you like? And he went, I like so-and-so. I really like their shtick. And that felt like a red flag oh, to shtick. me. Is that weird? It might be an old soul. I'd... I mean, that would have kind of made me laugh. Shtick. I like this guy. He's got just... a little borscht belt in him. <laughs> <laughs> hey, kid, what's your act? He was like, I like that person's um... shtick. And it's someone I knew. And I was like, that's a great comic. They don't have a shtick. They have an act. Like, I, got... I don't get how an assistant makes your life easier. I agree. I haven't hired one. Because yeah. all of those people are going to talk, who are going to talk to you, are going to talk to them. That's right. And then you have to talk to that person. That's and right. Then, and then they regurgitate it back to you. That's right. So you still had the conversations, and then you are one person removed from your career now. Yeah. Now there's this buffer. Yeah. And what if you hire a fucking lunatic? Yes, I've done that. Yeah. I've hired a lot of them. I think it, have you hired anyone who's slowly trying to become you? Yes. A single white female? I, have. <laughs> <laughs> I totally have. And it's also, a, I end up hiring a lot of people that like a couple months in are like, I have to go to my improv class. Or like, I have to go, like, I got a spot at the comedy store. And I'm just like, all right, fine. But I don't know. I like, um, I always like helping people. Like I want to, because no one gave me really any of that. I didn't really get to work for other people and learn from other people. So I don't know. I kind of like to, I like to do that. I heard Benton, um, he was opening for me on the road. And then I found out he was dyslexic. I kept missing meetings. And then oh. I keep him around. I don't even care that he's dyslexic. I don't even give a shit. Yeah. <laughs> we I figure keep, it out. I keep it like, you know. Like, you like to keep... I just do all my shit. Yeah. And if I get, if I don't go as far, I don't, I'm okay with that. I just can't answer emails. I get I get enraged when one email turns into five emails. I just I get enraged because I feel like people are stealing my time, and I just I get I get enraged. You know what? I'm starting to see that anger. I'm I get, starting to light up. <laughs> I get certain things make me very angry, and uh, like I think it, it started since my dad died. I get angry when someone takes up too much of my time or like wastes my time, or when anyone is abusive to a child or an animal in public. I I lose it. So before your dad died, you didn't care if somebody beat the shit out of their kid <laughs> with a puppy? I think I wasn't as uh, uh, conscious of uh, the consequence of confronting them about it. Like, I wouldn't confront them about it. I'd be like, that sucks. That pisses me off. Now I confront people. <laughs> in... Sucks to be you, kid. <laughs> well, no. Tell me what you think of this. I saw a, a woman in a grocery store, and she had, a, like, a five-year-old kid. 
and the kid kept taking the Lucky Charms and putting it into the shopping cart. And the woman would take it out and put it back. And the kid would take it and put it back. And the woman started getting pissed. And she was like, put it back in. See what happens. Put it in. See what happens. Mm -hmm. And I was just like, that's sarcasm. It's clear the kid didn't know it was sarcasm. And the kid was like, didn't understand if it was an order, but kind of knew something was up. Was this kid, what was his build? Was he husky? (laughs) Pretty... (laughs) He was like a maybe, maybe she was intimidated. Well, you get a good point. <laughs> that, that's mothering. I know that that I what you're seeing is three seconds of being a mom, and she's dealt with snapping. this little fucking brat. Yeah, you know, like yeah, there's there's like I'll tell you, if there was cell phone cameras around when I was a kid, the shit that all the moms were doing. Yeah, my mom used to grab my ear in public and drag me out of a grocery store. My mother one time threatened that if my Two younger brothers didn't knock it off. She was going to spank their bare asses on the side of the road, and she fucking did it. And people drove by yeah. beeping the horn, laughing. <laughs> yeah, so yeah, Whatever. It's a different time. I mean, there was sh- there's shit that needed to be improved upon. and then, But I think a lot of that old school kind of uh, parenting is, is coming back a little bit. You know, there's always like, you know, going too far this way, then we overcorrect that way. Right, right, right. Or whatever. Right. Um, you know. Do you find yourself... Um... I, I'm terrified of having kids, mostly because I'm terrified of having to be friends with parents that I don't like. <laughs> have you found yourself yet having to like be on like play dates? Um, no, I the I, I mean, if I don't like a group, set of parents, then I that, that's it. It's one and done. Yeah. So, but for, <laughs> what if they become friends? If who becomes the, friends? your kid and their kid? Um, I, well, I, they, my kid's not old enough where that's happened. Oh, okay. So it's just been, I, my parents, all the parents I've met have been, have been cool. It's just, I just don't like those people always forecasting doom. Yeah. So they'll be like, how old's your kid? And I'll be like, oh, she's, you know, two and a half. Oh, terrible twos, terrible twos. <laughs> and I'm like, no, no, she's actually really cool. Oh, wait, three, three major. Yeah. Wait, three, three. And it's just like, it's like, maybe you suck as a parent. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> terrible parents. Maybe you have an parents. asshole kid. Like, why? Because you fucking. This is like one of the things. People, somebody who sucks at their job, and right. now I have to. That's fucking right. Deal that's with right. It. I got to sit here and listen to you no. forecasting. My kid is like the happiest fucking why are you kid roasting ever. Roasting my kid ever. You don't know him. Yeah, she's just like uh, I have a great relationship with her, and if I start to flip out, she literally says, "Dad, Dad, no, don't, no, no screaming, Dad. Be happy. Aww. Be happy." And I go, ah. "I go, you're right. You're right." But I like it because she's not a, she's not afraid of me. She respects me, but she's not afraid of me. It's kind of like, no. you know, doing so. I'm doing good so far. Can I ask you an intimate question? And you can pass. Uh, did you have runner up names? Uh, like, did you have a list? I don't remember. I'm fascinated by names because now it's like it's. Um, I was going through with a friend of mine, and everyone starts to name their kid the same names. You know, like. Uh, Olivia, Jack, James, like there's just I just get so fascinated when people Jack and Olivia, beautiful names. They're, no, those, I love those. Those names. would be my. First but there was that weird kids. time where everybody was trying to act like their kid was a cowboy in another. <laughs> Wyatt, 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 Dakota. There was a lot of <laughs> that sort of. Uh, yes, Jameson. Let's, let's name. Let's name Henry. them after a state none of us want to go to <laughs> that, we, that we all look down on here in L.A. and New York. <laughs> That's so true. Yeah. People like L.A. rich snobs were naming their kid Montana. Yeah. So they would never go there. Yeah. Because Letterman bought a bunch of land out that's there. That's right. And that's right. They wanted to do it. I don't know what it was. But, like, yeah, there was definitely some, um, yeah, it, it, you know. I get fascinated by, like, the trends of names, you know? Like well, I'd... some of them go away that need to go mm-hmm. away. I don't know. There's a few names that I've seen out there. And it's like, you are you going to homeschool that kid? <laughs> If kids are as mean as I remember growing up, it's just like, I don't understand why you would do that. But you know what? It's their kid. Yep. They can name it what they want. I have no sympathy. My last name is Cummings. I got it pretty hard. You know, it's funny. I never even thought about that. You've always been Whitney Cummings. Yeah. So I never thought, I, I never put, like, sometimes you just have to separate the, the name for me to see it. To see how bad it is. And you Yeah, know, like there was guys I grew up with, like, you know, I would watch playing sports, right. and their name was their whole name. And then one day, someone would just say their first name. I was like, "Oh my god, <laughs> that's your fucking, name. That's a fucking terrible name." Yeah, I uh, I would get like um, I'd get the worst shit when I would get my papers back. Like in high school, people will have scratched it out and turned it into like cum shot, like come on your face. Like it was just constantly. And you're like, someday I'm gonna get married at 18. <laughs> get get rid of this fucking last name. I, I I also this no one believes this, but it's true. My parents uh, before they got married. Uh, my dad's last name was Cummings, and my mom was Cumming with no S. 
So I couldn't even like take my mom's name or something when they got divorced. Wait, they had the same name? Yes. With uh, my mom was uh, Cumming Cummings. Her maiden name is Cumming with no S. I know. <laughs> no relation, obviously? None. I mean, I don't know. Virginia and Texas. It's anyone's wow, guess. Wow, that's fucking wild. Isn't that wild? I wanted to do my uh, ancestry thing, but nobody will let me. I bet you wouldn't do that, huh? No. You're too worried about them making like a, taking your data? Uh, yeah, I just I, I, I am astounded by the complete lack of privacy now and how uh, corporations just gobble up all of this fucking information and yep. how uh, the government who tries to do that themselves doesn't have a problem with people, these companies that have now grown bigger than this country and have That's no loyal to, loyalty to us and keep us in never ending wars and bankrupt the country and all of this shit that if you talk about it, they just say you're a socialist <laughs> rather than no, I kind of like living here and I wouldn't, I don't want six people to get all the money. I'm so fucking torn about it though, because they found that golden state killer from one of those ancestry tests because if any of your ancestors take it, his like cousin yeah. did a spit. No, in I mean, that's I mean, a great, I mean, it's a good argument. I mean, I don't know. I just, I, but I don't think that that's why they did it. No, I think not the, at the all. cops yeah. did a good thing with it. I don't think the company, though, right. necessarily. No, no, I no. think they're just trying to make fucking money, and they're just um, taking your stuff. And uh, well, they want to like, like you know, like when they do those little, when they scan your little. Do you have a little discount card? Yeah, and how it's just like, shouldn't I get a cut on my information too? Should yeah. I get a piece of that? Mm-hmm. Nope. Nope. That's they, what theirs. They're doing Everything is, is theirs. They're selling it to insurance companies, and then your insurance goes up. I was reading about this thing how Google basically now can predict if you're going to have Parkinson's the way your mouse is moving, if your mouse starts moving slower, and if you're older, and they sell that to your insurance company. <laughs> yeah, and here's the thing: how do you, how do they even know that's true? Yeah, this is the thing. That sounds like a scam. Mm-hmm. That it's so they'll just make up this bullshit stat. Right. Uh, That's right. Where's the? Point? Hey, you're 90. I guess you. I guess you were right. <laughs> hey, can I have my uh, extra some of my extra premium money back? Can I be good? No, uh, you know we got to put that through the red tape. He's fucking 90. He'll be dead in two weeks. We'll just send this thing around and around and around. No, I think it's all. Uh, yeah, it's gross. I, this is getting depressing. <laughs> I do want to do one of those. No, that's why I, I stay away from. Uh, you know, I. You know, I. I like. It's just. I don't know. There's just a lot of, like, shit that is coming to fruition right now. And Real the fact, fast. The fact that we're still debating it. I know. Is, I remember you were uh, creeped scary. out. You got to meet my robot. You were less creeped out than I thought you would be. Most people are like, Ugh! They get real freaked out by it and upset. You were just kind of like, all right, there it is. No, I was relieved that it, it didn't look real at all. It looked more real on camera to you? Well, no, it was just sort of looked and then <laughs> fucking winked. That was creepy. <laughs> That's what I, the video I saw, but now that it's just been fucking sitting there like a couch potato in That's your right. office. It just looks like a corpse. It doesn't, yeah, it, do, it doesn't, and not at no point. That, I mean, I think if I walked into the house and from behind, if somebody put that in there, I'd be like, what the fuck? I would think the chick from The Ring was in there. Because I do think that's a thing, because I loved in your special what you were talking about with the robots, but now that I've been in the trenches with them so much and I've seen them, I'm like, they just look like shitty scarecrows. Like, there's nothing to be afraid of. No, but that's the beginning. They, that's right. They oh, well, get yeah. better and better. Yeah, not in our lifetime, hopefully. I can see where you shut my special off halfway through that joke. No, I did <laughs> I fucking think I love that special so much. And I uh, I just thought that was it's just I mean, you're I don't know. I don't want to give you compliments and bore the fuck out of you. Someone uh, I have a lot of questions uh, that people want to ask you. A lot of people okay. want to know how's your French coming along? Um, It's not coming along. I, I can actually read it pretty good. Yeah. Um, But I as far as speaking it, I just haven't had a just I don't know. There's nobody to speak it with. But uh, I'm OK with it. But I, I've kind of been trying to do something else. With my personal time, so I've, you know, being a dad and stuff, so stuff had to, like, kind of yeah. be dialed down. Yeah, so. I learn from, like, listening. So I'll, like, listen to those, like, tapes. Mm-hmm. Like, I, I used to know French pretty well, and I totally fucking forgot it. Right. And if I listen to the tape, sometimes I can, like, you know, like, mimic you can, it. Picking up a language, if you actually go to the country and try to do That's it. That's it, yeah. Yeah, it, you need, like, 90 days, and you could functionally... You know, I, maybe not ninety days, but I mean, you you within six months you yeah. could functionally get around, yeah, and like have phrases. So true. No, I mean not just memorized, and then you just if you were immersed in it, like it's just. I feel like sometimes things. they won't let you. Like when I try to speak French in another country, they're just like, "Well, let me just speak English." No, sure. fuck that. I have to listen to your bad English. I, <laughs> I, I, I so true. The fact that French people act like they speak English well. 
They're like, no, no, I'll take you. Shut the fuck up. I don't want to listen to your fucking little puckered up lips. You're going to listen to my fucking wide mouth English French, and I'll listen to your puckered up fucking English. I hate that. I'm like, je suis. And they're like, I'll take it from here. And then they have some shitty ass English. I'm just like, why are we doing this? No, you got to be like, I got to be honest with you. Your your English is terrible. (laughs) Your English is terrible. Do you think your English is better than my fucking French? French? I mean, it is, but I mean, it's just this, this, uh, then I, I mean, I've actually found when I've gone there that, uh, if you're making a fucking attempt, like they they spoke spoke it back to me. Like this, yeah. it's been while. I got it up to like a three back and forth exchange at yeah. one point before they were like ah, oh, and then they switch over to English. I do find though the masculine and feminine. It makes you realize how much easier English is. That's always what I want to say. I'm going to go. In- English is just easier, you know, because you don't have to have two versions of every word, like the masculine version and the feminine version. I also get embarrassed. I need to work on getting embarrassed. Um, Less when I try to say someone else's language. We'd be like, yeah. just me. It's just yeah. like embarrassing. You push through it. You have to like be vulnerable or something. Do you know what I mean? I'm surprised feminists haven't had a problem with the uh, I, French language yet. So it's like, what's this gender? There's no yeah. such thing Why as gender. Why is la maison? Why is the house feminine? Is he saying that women are supposed to fucking stay huh? and fucking <laughs> cook for you? <laughs> that really bothers me when people are like, I don't like it when people imply that women should be in the kitchen. The richest women are the ones that have cooking shows. Oh, is that right? Rachel Ray, Martha Stewart, Oprah, all she does. Oprah's not in the kitchen. Well, she does her, on her Instagram now, she has her harvest and she cooks in her, vet, like. <laughs> her harvest. She has a harvest. You haven't does seen her. Does she have her gardener come in there? <laughs> she has her harvest. When you're that rich. I love harvesting. <laughs> you can go back to pretending to be poor. Did, did, did she have her uh, Ralph Lauren, I'm going to go gardening outfit on? Always. $4,000 fucking sun hat. Always. You have to get these. I love these. You're getting a hat. You're getting a hat. The whole thing is so fucking ridiculous. I loved it that the Oprah, like, uh, the gifting things, what were they called? Oprah's favorite things. It was all like a $200 candle. <laughs> like, who's buying that shit? But, yes. And she was making all this fucking money off of it. Oprah's favorite things. How else can I carve up what I've built to make even more fucking money? I can't believe people fucking sit and watch that shit. Nothing against her. They're just bringing her up. But there's some of that shit. Yeah. It was just like, how much of this fucking going up your own asshole can you fucking watch here? <laughs> but don't you think there's a certain point where people are surrounded by so many yes people that they probably just have lost touch with reality and what no, real people I think, want? No, I think you can just be fucking, just be like, all right, let's, it's like, uh, I don't know, that band Kiss. Mm-hmm. All right, let's have a lunchbox. And it gets all the way, let's have a fucking urinal cake and a coffin. Fly swatters. I mean, you know, a little perforated fucking the, the, the kiss fly fucking thing. After a while, you just I think it just takes on a life of its own. You just get sick and say no. So you're like, fine. Just anything with alliteration. It. They'll make kiss curtains. Kiss, kiss curtains. curtains. I like that. I like that. <laughs> Yet they haven't made kiss lip balm for some reason. Um, the one thing I might buy. Uh, I do, though, think that that I, I I don't know. I got in trouble a little bit on my special about this, but I do like to, like, point out the hypocrisies and all this shit where it's just like when people are like women aren't supposed to be in the kitchen. It's like, well, what? What? Rachel Ray has a castle in Italy. Is that not feminist? Does she really? Yeah. She has a castle from cooking in the kitchen every morning on her show. I just think that there's this thing where it's like she fe- makes what? I make 20 minute meals. I used to watch it all the time. I called that, by the way, a long time ago. Did she be rich? I was like, there's something about her. And this chick I was dating at the time was just going like, hey, she's such like a dompy domp, whatever the fuck that means. Like, ah, she's kind of fucking hot. And then I don't she know. Is. She is. There's something but what I like about, about her, though, was she went a little too far into the business. They highlighted her hair and all that type of shit. And then she dialed it back and got back to who she was. She, you saw the whole fucking arc. Huh. That's interesting. I've done her show a couple times. Have you done her show before? Uh, there's no fucking way I would ever go on one of those shows. <laughs> It's when Just, you... There's nobody who watches those shows that needs to hear anything that I say. Like, you got to know who the fuck you are. And that's one of those dumb things where if somebody I know who yeah. was like me went on one of those shows and yeah. got in trouble, yeah. I'd be like, what the fuck were you doing on that show for? It's so You're true. You're going to talk conspiracy and fucking banging <laughs> whores on, on, on a fucking cooking show that comes on at four in the afternoon? What, what, did, you, what did you think was going to happen? It is weird because anytime I do one of those shows and they're like, here, now you're going to be tasting food. And you're like, okay. And like, there's no version you can just be like, it's fine. Like, you have to be like, right. this is delicious. Like, it's all yeah. so fakey, fake, and weird. But just watch. Yeah, but you did it. I did it many times. You did it. Well, then uh, you can't complain about it. Literally. They didn't like the toast the first time, right? <laughs> Don't fucking come back for the exit. I feel like I have to do all that shit. But when you go on a talk show, it becomes like a thing. Every When you go on a talk show, people, like, start sending it around. 
It's yeah. all it's for better or for worse. It is one it of the greatest well delights to watch you uh, oh, go on to a morning show. <laughs> well, you know what? I got I got that was a being an old timer here when I was growing up, uh, a comedian uh, being able to do panel was a big thing. Big deal. And there was like certain guys that I would watch that were fucking great at it. And then there was other people that I would watch do stand up and then they would sit down and they weren't as good. And um, and plus back then, like how long you had to be in the business, how many people you had to beat out just to get on there. Like they, everybody was was polished. Like I remember George Goble was I was a big fan of his. Still am a big fan of his. Yeah. But he was considered like um, not at the level of of uh, you know like like. But he was being compared. There's that famous one where he was on with like Dean Martin and Bob mm-hmm. Hope and all those guys. Mm-hmm. But he still like to this day like would be like compared to um, most people that get on because you can get on so easily now yeah. easier because everybody has like a fucking show or a YouTube so channel many shows, yeah. that they're just not as seasoned as this guy was. Uh, with his whole background, and there was just mm-hmm. so many people out there that like it, it was. I don't know. It was. It was very rare that if if somebody was in show business and they sat down on the couch that they didn't have a good panel. Yeah. It was obviously if a fucking lion tamer comes in, somebody who's like you know right, sort right. of in show business, <laughs> but not really, um, or some weirdo. Then it became about the host reacting to them. But uh, I, that was just something I always wanted to get good at. So I appreciate that compliment. It's so, and I I don't like going on some of the shows sometimes because you go on and everyone's like, uh oh let's see if we can get through this without getting a FCC violation. Like everyone like shame. You're like, I'm a comedian. What did you think was going to happen? Like, I'll try to behave myself. They're, sell- they're just selling it. That's yeah. What they do. They just sell like, they're just selling the fucking show. Um, that you just, you got to block all of that out and you just go out and you do what you do. And then you just stay off social media for three days. Mm-hmm. And that's what, right, that's whenever right. those group of people were that didn't like you, right. it's just, which which is not a story. No, it's like, oh, my God, everybody didn't like it. Of that's course right. they didn't. That's everybody right. doesn't fucking like ice cream. Some people actually don't like ice cream. If you can believe that, you could actually find a group of people <laughs> who fucking say, I don't like ice cream. I don't understand those people. But like you, you and, you know, if you just put the camera on them, you have a major backlash against ice cream. I can... It gives you headaches that rots your teeth. <laughs> <laughs> It's that time of year again, and you know it's time to share smiles and the good times with friends and family. Uh, and of course, co- <laughs> <laughs> of course, it's time to exchange gifts. How about you give yourself a goddamn gift? Am I allowed to curse in these? Probably not. Sure. The gift of self-confidence. What better gift is that? How do you get self-confidence? By having straighter, brighter teeth with help from Candid. Candid's aligners can help you straighten your teeth faster and cheaper than traditional wire braces, which are a living nightmare. I had them. Didn't go well for me. Treatment of Candid takes just six months on average and costs 65% less. What more do you want, people? An experienced orthodontist who is licensed in your state creates custom treatment plans. They show you a 3D preview so that you can see what your teeth will look like after you're done. That's incredible. It's like Star Wars for your face. Candid's aligners are comfortable, removable, and completely invisible. Give yourself the gift of Candid. Go to candidco.com slash Whitney. Use the code Whitney to get $75 off. That's a lot of money off. And CandidCo.com slash Whitney, code Whitney, for $75 off. Don't make me say it again. And you know I will. CandidCo.com slash Whitney, code Whitney. Write it down. Pull over. I do like to kind of fight with people in the comments, though. I hate that I do, but I do. You know what I always do? I make What you, what you really got to do is hmm. you, you go after their picture. Always. It's That's always them and their do. daughter. It's always someone will come to me and be like, you dumb cunt, you look old. And it's oh, a guy and his daughter. And I, I always say, I feel sorry for your daughter. I'm sorry that you're her father. <laughs> then he immediately changes the photo. I had one, this guy goes, I can't remember what he said to me. Aren't you a little bit old to blah, blah, blah? And I go, aren't you a little bit old to be taking selfies on a bridge? <laughs> Which I don't even know what that means. He had just taken a selfie on a bridge and it just shut the whole fucking thing down. That's what you do. You just go after <laughs> their picture. Yeah. But the people who say the meanest oh, shit fuck. do not have a fucking picture. They're like a bot, like an egg. Yeah, it's like the it's egg. Like the egg. Yeah, well, that's like egg. people, I think, that make profile fake ones just to troll, right? Is that what that is? Yeah, which I respect. 
If you're doing it to just get a rise out of somebody, yeah. I think that's fucking hilarious. Yeah. It's <laughs> Even if you get me, I think it's fucking funny. But if you're doing it because you're too much of like a coward to yeah. uh, like um, use like your real account, and but, but you're saying shit you actually mean. That's yeah. Because a troll, I don't think, is saying they don't mean it. They're yeah. just trying to get attention. Yeah. I, I would have done that. Like back in the day when I was growing <laughs> up, if I could have fucking typed something and sent it to somebody on TV. I mean, how long do you do that before you're like, let me see if I can fucking make them mad. I mean, it just, it just seems, it was like when you bought a BB gun when I was a kid. At first, right. you know, you're shooting at trees and then it fucking some cans and eventually you're going to shoot at each other. You just have to keep, I don't know, it's kind of how humans. The bar gets Yeah, you got to progress. We'll get you the rush. So I would have done that. And I got to tell you, as far as like being like an angry person uh, and dealt with anger for a long time, which is weird. I really learned that I'm not an angry person. It's my default emotion. And trying to separate that has been my kind of my life's work here. But like if you can if you can go empathy as much as you can and get outside yourself and just be, you know, um, you know, it kind of it takes down a lot of that stuff. But if I'm in a fucking mood, Mm -hmm. it's why I don't like I I don't. read i probably maybe read like eight percent of, of the anything. comments yeah if i put something out yeah and i want to see what the general feedback is most, i just scroll until i get to the bad one that's I'm what like, i do all right that's cool had about 12 good ones one bad one 120 to 10 that's and then good. i go everyone's saying this i'm the one that blows it up and amplifies it when that's really not the metrics at all no. and social media has been out for too long for you to still be doing that so you're <laughs> you're just going to be doing like some sort of sell i'm giving i'm empowering you here it's cutting totally well it's just me yeah. going like i want to go hurt myself i'm going to yeah. go seek out the thing that's going to you know justify what i'm already thinking and make me feel like a victim and get me into my dopamine adrenaline and what rush. do you do then you go eat a big bowl of chocolate cereal <laughs> and puke outside in your backyard <laughs> i hate myself i hate myself go <laughs> hit my robot yeah. <laughs> take my rage out on her yeah. beat your dog i went to uh i went to the twitter offices and they said that uh in america 22 percent of people are on twitter of that two percent of people generate 80 percent of the comments yeah i saw something like that yeah <laughs> it's like yep of course yeah of course didn't we all knew that didn't we all know that yeah, i think we all secretly kind of knew that but didn't want to believe it i was like are you sure <laughs> that, that's, that's not convenient that doesn't fit my narrative but i do though sort of get even more annoyed when i confront somebody and then they're like oh i'm sorry i didn't think you'd see this i was just fucking around i'm like well now <laughs> at least commit Listen, to yeah, your negativity you, you can't yeah you, you're gonna bring a lot of that shit you get a lot of shit yeah you get a lot of shit yeah as as do a lot of uh attractive women get shit Either way, they either get, hey, I fucking love the blah, 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 blah. Yeah. Or they just, you just get fucking shit. So you have to know, like, how they're going to come at you. Like, I know with me, you bald-headed, pasty, fucking uh, mongoloid. I guess. Mongoloid? Yeah. <laughs> so I got to be honest with you. I didn't give a shit that they said that about me. It's one of the funnier fucking words in the English language. It's so weird chat. I actually bursted out laughing when I read that. <laughs> but the thing is, you just have to, like... That's, but that's the other thing is I think that because I, <laughs> I actually looked the word up too because someone's like that's not a bad word but I guess it came it came from some everything comes from it's, something no like I that. do think you're like technically not supposed to it's one it's on the list of things that you're not supposed to maybe oh, say come on at, you, you got to keep some of those <laughs> mongoloid has to stick around well what I love is all these you know all these uh, woke people who are using all the latest terms like all these terms are then going to be outdated. Oh, no, you're, it's going to be offensive in two years. I'm trying to think of... I said gender creative once because that was the new thing. And then they said it's gender nonconforming. And then I was like, okay. And then it was gender nonbinary. Oh, what is it Christ. now? Benton can tell us. Gender fluid? Yeah, gender fluid or queer. Okay. <laughs> but that's not the same thing, is it? Gender fluid means you're bisexual. No. That, queer means... Benton's no, gender fine. fluid is, means some days you feel more like a boy and some days you feel more like a girl. All right. And this is the thing. Now, am I in trouble because I didn't know that? No, I'm too busy trying to. I fucking put a bet in who's going to win the Super Bowl. All right, that's what that's what the stats I'm focused on right now. Yeah, who's going to win? I think the Seattle Seahawks. Ooh, are going to are going to go up against the Baltimore Ravens. Yeah. And I think I think Pete Carroll's going to get his second ring. That's what I think. I'm so. I'm from D.C. and I feel like you can't even say the name of my team anymore. The Bullets. No, D.C., Washington. The team from Washington is what they say now. Don't they, instead of Redskins? The Redskins. I, yeah, I went on Rich Eisen's show, and I was like, I'm a Washington Redskins fan. And he was like, they say the team from Washington. <laughs> I was like, oh. Since when? I think recent. 
Yeah, but I got to be honest with you. That is one that I don't know how the fuck that one. Like, out of all the stupid <laughs> shit that they're fucking changing, that one is just sitting there. It's the most offensive shit. <laughs> Somebody... In case you didn't know what we were talking about, here's one of those people on the side of our helmets. <laughs> I've met Native Americans. None of them are that color. Their skin is not red. It's bright red. Redskins ever in Washington. I'm more red skin. <laughs> it should be like a fucking the Washington gingers. <laughs> Do you think they should change the Redskins name? Uh, that's one of those ones. There's just certain things like that, doing that stupid tomahawk chop. That's it's just crazy. like, oh, my God, how the fuck are you still doing that? I mean, I went to— The it... tomahawk, just a bunch of white people. Ah, and it's just like, you look like you're in a fucking <laughs> Western in the 1930s. I'm waiting for like a black and white John Wayne to come walking on. We got to go up the fucking whatever the fuck the guy used to say. <laughs> it's just like— there are some high Christ. schools that still say engines. Go engines. I looked this up. I got real into it. Yeah, but you know something? I bet they also live in the middle of nowhere. Yeah. They don't get the good food. Right, right, right. They don't right. get the good books. Yeah. It's very easy to be sitting out here with your fucking almond milk, knowing <laughs> what to say. That's right. You know, you live in the middle of nowhere with a rusted out Derek behind you. Right. Come on. <laughs> and then Empathy. Th- See, you got to go empathy. Empathy and forgiveness. That's my new thing. I was talking to my therapist about uh, people that were leaving nasty comments, and I read them to her, and she went, God, it sounds like they're in a lot of pain. And I was like, fuck. And you went, oh, fuck, fuck you, lady. <laughs> I do have rage. I don't, I'm actually pro rage because I grew up in a home where everything was bottled and everything was passive aggressive and there wasn't a lot of direct communication. People were like, no, I'm fine. Everything's fine. No, I'm not mad. Go do that. Like I, I like when people are angry because I at least know it's honest communication. I like, I'd like to know where I stand. You got a long road ahead of you. <laughs> really? <laughs> You'll probably catch up with me, but I'm walking down that same road. <laughs> I feel bad. Do you go to like therapy? I feel bad for you. Regularly? I know I know where you're at right now. <laughs> You've been here? I yeah. Where I'm justifying rage? Justifying rage. You're trying. At least I, you know where you I know. stand. I'm screaming at you. Yeah. You know I'm mad. Hey, I tell it like it is. <laughs> um yeah. It's uh all downhill. It's it no, you're it's able you're able to uh oh you're in therapy, that's a good fucking thing. But yeah. the, you know, what I did find out with therapy is yeah. is if you're just going in there and emptying your brain every week but you're not actually working on it, it's like it would be like sitting down and talking about working, working out. Working out to with and your then trainer. Never going to the gym. No, so. I'm like twelve step program. I like do the whole deal. You know, okay. doing the whole thing. All right. It's like exercise. You got to do it every day. You release your resentments every night. I write out who I'm mad at and who I'm holding resentment towards on my little app. How's it working it's, out? You know, it's going pretty well. <laughs> you are fucking wound tight. I, you I, are fucking. They have, I, you know what? They, I never noticed. I don't think I hung out with you because we're always at the fucking store and we talk for like 10 minutes. Me. Yeah. No. Yeah, I would not want to make you mad. <laughs> no, 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 no. I, well, Benton had to see it. I got a tree delivered. I, I get real mad about like little things. Big things, I don't even care. Car wrecks. Car, like, I'll leave my car and I'm like, I'll That's deal with exactly it. how I am. We should, by the way, that was kind of a weird moment. Bill just came over and we just watched coyotes walk around in my yard. Yeah, there was a wall, but his, that's that why weird. that's why I, I keep telling uh, my wife when my daughter goes outside. It's like there's coyotes out here. So they you took make one sure... off of a porch in Arizona, a baby. Oh my god! Why did I bring that up? <laughs> Sorry, I just ruined my fucking day. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> How do you ever get past that? I don't. And you're telling me if there's a God and he lets that happen and then you blow your brains out because you can't deal with that fucking sadness, which is exactly what the fuck I would do. He's then going to give me shit for fucking killing myself. This is why I go This crazy. is why I don't go to church. This is why. It doesn't fucking make sense. This is why I get so angry. Shit like that. He, we just showed videos. I wake up uh, in the middle of the night, sleepwalk and uh, fight with coyotes in my sleep because I'm so afraid of them taking my dogs. After I heard that story, fucked up my whole life. Shouldn't have brought it up. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Who would have thought your robot is less fucking scarier? <laughs> I mean, Jesus Christ. You fucking sleep. You know how fucking... Sleep- I sleepwalk, yeah. Do you sleep well? Um, some nights I do. Yeah? I think I... I, I as, as I've gotten... Uh, older and and you know found the person i'm supposed to be with and now i have a beautiful daughter and it's like this there's, there's ramifications yeah for my actions so i really have to uh you know i gotta fucking chill <laughs> so i play drums a lot i do that a lot like i try to do that 
when that's sort of my little thing. I'll just say, you, you know, do, I'm, I'm going to go out in the garage and see if my drums still work. That's what I say. And then d- does it, um, uh, you'd can be you a hear great, it? You'd be a great drummer. Do you think so? Just like <laughs> letting out my. Be, I mean, it would be good for you. It's fun. Really? It's yeah. It's a lot. Oh yeah. I, oh yeah. I had an injury. I broke my shoulder, and I can't box, which was the thing that I really like to get aggression out. And I mm-hmm. can't do that anymore. But drumming, maybe I'll try. I suck at. I'm sure I suck at it though. Well, I mean, you suck at everything when you start it, um, but you just keep building it up. And now with like YouTube and shit, it's sort of limitless as far as like uh, what you can see out there. Like yeah. the kids that play drums now are fucking. They're fucking unbelievable. Unbelievable. Because yeah, you have to guitar. start young, though, right? No, it's because then now you're basically jamming with the world. Like yeah. it was like when you grew up, when I was a kid, you were as good as what you could take from a record and who was in your neighborhood to show you shit. Yeah. So that was your world was very small. And like nowadays, it's just like everything that was a mystery f- to me growing up as far as excuse me, as far as my the music I was listening to has been broken down. The music literally yeah. wrote out, yeah. written out. So then. Like the the ideas that then get cr- created, it it does. But the only thing that it has done is it, it makes a lot of people sound the same. Where there used to be like, hey, this is this That's right. Philly drummers sound like this. Yeah, you know, yeah. Boston guys sound like this. Detroit had a sound like mm-hmm. cities had sounds, and yeah. I think that that gets uh, that gets hurt now, where it's just sort of all becoming like uh, like like one's uniform sort of sound. Uh, Girl was on uh, a couple episodes ago, and I rewatched that Sonic Highways. Did you ever see that documentary? Uh, I watched everything that guy saw. It's though. so good. Yeah, I love that so much. You seem like yeah. you watch a lot of documentaries, from what I can tell. Um, yeah, I, I do. Uh, you know, some of them I get into, some of them not really. I I, I watch a lot of uh, old shit, and then I watch um, I watch a lot of sports. I think, but and then I'm totally into like music and shit like that, and fucking aviation and baking and i like a zillion fuck it's like my ad I, I just fucking i gotta be doing something or learning something Me too. but comedy is the only thing i ever really stuck with so that was the only thing i ever really kind of got good at where yeah. everything else i kind of you know jack of all trades but um i actually you know one of the best live drummers i ever saw was dave i saw dave Grohl on the uh them crooked vultures tour i saw him at the will turn mm-hmm. and it was really cool because i also got to see one of the members of led zeppelin because john paul jones was in that of course josh homie and i forget who the guy they had a hired gun on guitar it was fucking killer and it was just like it was it was awesome it was just they were just everybody in that band was just the real deal yeah. and they came out and um the hell was the song there was some song that in the end it's just this this fill that Dave Grohl does and it was so fucking clean but still was also like had like human element it wasn't like right. it just was fucking so I was just like when he was playing I couldn't believe it and then uh the person I was with who didn't even play drums was like Jesus Christ that guy's that guy's like really good right <laughs> the <laughs> it's best. like yeah well because they are not like Drummers don't get a lot of love. No. You know, a lot of people know Dave Grohl because he's a frontman of, of, of Foo Fighters. Fighters but yeah. like, if you were just like the drummer in the band, there's a lot of people. You know, everybody knows Jim Morrison. They don't You're know in the John. Back. They don't know John Densmore. You know what I mean? So, yeah. um, and doesn't the drummer kind of set the? They're in a way the conductor in a way. Like they sort of set the beat well, of the song. From what I've heard, I mean, yeah. I, I don't do that if I play with people. But like, <laughs> great drummers. Yeah, it's, it's yeah. basically like a the heart, band. the heartbeat of the band. Well, basically, if you uh, like a, a good, uh, uh, it's almost like an editor in a movie. That's right. Where like an editor can take a good performance and make it great, or take a, a good performance and make it bad. I feel like a drummer does the same thing. Where it's like it can take a good band and and can elevate mm-hmm. what they sound like, or you can just drag them down. Mm-hmm. You know, like the unsung hero, also a little bit. Yeah, probably. I mean, I'm. T- I mean, I don't know shit about it, but like just as far as like is being an admirer of drummers i just always thought it was the coolest fucking instrument with like the independence and then also just having a sports background the physical yeah. aspect right. of it um i always i always liked it but this yeah there's some monster 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 players out there i actually you know what i just came across was uh mars volta had an ep that they put out that i had never even heard of huh. i only listened to their first three albums i just discovered it and i'm a huge john theodore fan and um the last song on that is there's a drum groove that he plays that's just, it's just, it's fucking mind boggling. Is it like kind of like how quarterbacks they say are like cerebral? Is, is drumming, is, it's pretty cerebral, isn't it? As well as physical? Like, I, I don't know. I mean, it's just a hobby for me. I, I, I don't, I don't know. But I, I, 
I, I think from what all the interviews that I've watched them mm-hmm. playing, but like there's like uh I actually uh saw one thing on Vinnie Colliuta one time. Mm-hmm. Who's arguably arguably the greatest fucking drummer alive right now. Um he was talking about someone was asking him about a drum fill, this crazy fucking drum fill that he did that he just it somehow fit. And they were like, are these things that you work on? He's like, you know, I work on stuff or whatever. And, and then are you thinking tonight I'm going to pull that that fill out? And he said, no. He said, I, I just let it go. I don't think about it. And he said, and he said this most, so such a profound thing that transcended drumming. He said, uh, thinking is the enemy. So it's not like you're out there mm-hmm. like, count, it's like you're more like listening, whatever. And like, you know, as a comedian, mm-hmm. where are you when you're the worst? When you're between your ears, and now I'm doing this joke, and that I'm over here. That didn't go well. Ears. Yeah, li- uh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Totally. So that's going to be a meme, by the way, you doing this. <laughs> um, <laughs> I think that's a dumb David off joke. The walrus. Um, <laughs> but then there's nights like, one of the best things that can ever happen is you walk out immediately and you get heckled, I yep. find. That Richard Pryor special, if you watch that down in Long Beach, That's right. he walked out, people weren't sitting down, they were talking, and he just started flowing, and he got into a fucking zone mm-hmm. like I've never seen mm-hmm. since. And he got into this fucking zone from the beginning to the, f- hour, and the special was like an hour and 18 minutes or something like that, 14 minutes, I forget. Mm-hmm. It just is just killing. Yep. Killing. And that was like, he had that set. That that never happens on the special night ever. You know what I mean? You're so he, robotic. He he fucking had that like set, and I and I've you know uh, just being a fan of music, I've listened to musicians, and it's it's sort of it's that that same thing. Like when you're in the zone, the same thing. Like when you know basketball players can't miss a shot. Mm-hmm. There's a thing that you get into like as you know as a comedian, you just get out there and you improv, and it's funny, and it just you just feel like you're light, you're just floating. And then the very next show is always the worst because the next show is like, you're is it going to happen you're again? Trying to replicate it. Well, you're thinking about the last that's, show, that's so right. then you're here. That's true. And you're just going like, and then I said this, and then I did this improv, and nothing's working. And you're like, oh, I thought I had 20 minutes of new stuff. I don't even have 30 seconds. And um, I think they call it flow state. There was a there was an interesting book about flow state. But then if you're trying so hard to... It's a terrible name it's for it. Awful. It's such a beautiful thing to experience. Flow state. <laughs> flow state. Chop, chop. It sounds like a like a, like a a always with wings, like easy flow day. It sounds like a woman's sanitary pad. It's just for something that it's describing, mm-hmm. it's flow state. It's just <laughs> it's the exact opposite. That sounds like when you're, you're fucking stuck in your head. When you're not thinking about what you're doing. So many times I feel like in specials, like you're looking down on yourself, like just doing the thing you've been doing. And you're like, get out of there. Get the... Get in there so you have to develop i i just sort of developed like tricks to get myself out of that oh so what it, what it is is what you don't realize is every night you fuck up a joke mm-hmm. you fuck something up every even if you're doing like a 10 minute set you fuck something up right or you had like a brain fart something fucking happened but you don't notice because it's not being documented and it's then with well, a second the camera comes on it becomes like oh my god and everybody's gonna know and it's just i you have to get yourself into that like I just look at a special as like this is like this is not going to be the perfect performance. You're just documenting where my act was on this night right here, and I'm going to come out with the same. You, it's a weird thing because the stakes aren't where they are, but you really you have to put them back down mm-hmm. to just some another sort of, show to a functioning level so you can just go out and do what you do, and um, it takes it takes a number of those to learn how to do that. It's so hard. Usually what I try to do is I'll try to get it and then go, okay, we got it. Now the next one's the one. And then I also I was talking to Mike Bertolino about this, who runs Bill's company. He's just the greatest. I was like, I want to just do 10 shows, and you guys just secretly record one of them. Just don't tell me which one it is. I've thought about that. <laughs> or that if a- I recorded 10. Yeah. But then what you're doing is then then you're making like, you know, I feel like that's the comedy version of when they overproduce an album. Yeah. And then there's no mistakes there's nobody breathing on it. Yes. It's just, it's just like f- everything's like, you know, been pro tooled and just fucking lined up. I, I mean, I, I feel like the stuff that people the same way, like the stuff that people like the most are the mistakes. That's right. Always. It, it actually makes it like, uh, you know, it's like when, you know, if you ever done like a sitcom taping, 
The, Never. The crowd goes, if you fuck up a line, yes, they they, go, that's it, what they came there that's for. That's right. It's berserk. They yeah. don't, and they don't want to see a prepackaged, polished thing. People are also so savvy now. Um, uh, someone uh, was telling me that uh, photos get twice as many likes if your arm is in it and you're taking it yourself. But if you do like a perfectly like Wes Anderson, symmetrical, good photo in front of the leaning tower, seen it. No, thanks. Too perfect. Really? Mm hmm. Not interesting. Yeah. We're moving towards like we want authentic. We want messy. We want sort of not sloppy. <laughs> I don't know if we want authentic. <laughs> I know people say they, they're like, no, we want your authentic would also be the truth of everything, which I don't think anybody could handle. <laughs> Which is why I'm I'm fucking watching me TV. Me TV. Um, there's a couple th- questions people have for you. You asked so many that I was reluctant. Um, one thing I did want to ask you about was the Surf Ballroom Clear Lake Iowa show. Oh wow, yeah, it was amazing. <laughs> yeah, a lot of people wanted to hear your thoughts on it. Um, I don't know anything about it. All right, that's the place where uh, Buddy Holly, Richie Valens, and the Big Bopper performed, and then they died. They they they. Um, Got on a plane. I don't think it was. Uh, Whoa. De icing. I don't know if that existed back then. I don't know what it was. Or the kid was too inexperienced for what he flew into, and they they died. But uh, I always just wanted, just being a music fan, I wanted to see the place. And um, I went on the road with with uh, who was I with? I was with Dean Del Rey. Love it. And I was in this regular hotel, and then Dean found. Just randomly in that town, who's who? Are you good with architects? I'm really bad with architects. Mm-hmm. Who's that fucking guy? If it's guy? Frank Gehry, I'm good with it. That guy who built everything out. That he built like they almost, they almost look like fucking King Tut looking houses. Um, oh, can we Google King Tut? Architect? I always want to. I always want to say like fucking L. Ron Hubbard. I know it's not that. <laughs> he has some good buildings. It's it's one of those the fucking Scientology things. buildings are always very. Majestic. They have great taste in real estate, those Scientologists. Yeah, they do. And Frank Lloyd Wright. Oh well, yeah. L. Ron Hubbard. Frank okay, Lloyd got Wright, it. Right. Um, there was a Frank Lloyd Wright. Hotel in the middle of fucking in Iowa? Iowa. Yeah. And it was the shit. So we stayed there. That's wild. We flew uh we flew into like Detroit or something. I don't forget where we flew. Uh maybe Chicago or something like that. Yeah. And then we took like this little plane there. Yeah. Uh so of course everybody's like, Oh my god, we're taking the little plane, are we gonna die? It's like, no, they have technology. There's all kinds <laughs> of stuff. I would just here. think the pilots have kids. The pilots wanna stay alive. I just yeah. have to focus on them. And it was also a woman pilot. You, we could like see her, and it was sitting there like there was like nothing here. So my buddy, uh, oh no, it was a different flight. My buddy was. I had another buddy that freaked out. Was just like shouldn't be a woman. <laughs> when women should not be fucking pilots. I was like, dude, they've gone through probably went through extra bullshit. That's what I'm saying. They're, they have to be twice as good. So. I hope. Yes. But with all this bitching on social media, they yeah. might have been pressured into a hire. Which I've seen in sports. I see. Well, they'll they'll push someone into the broadcast booth before they're fucking ready to be like, see, see, we have a vagina. That's what I'm trying to tell people about female president. The worst thing that could happen is someone that's not ready does it. They go, see, this is why we shouldn't have a female president. This is why we shouldn't. It's just going to actually make the stereotype true if you push someone in before they're ready. Yeah. I don't like the Democrat trend, too, of like after the guy's president, then the wife runs. Like, I don't understand that one at all. Because it's the thing of it's like I've dated a couple guys that decided to become comedians after we dated. And I'm like, did I make it seem so easy? Did that look easy to you? <laughs> you didn't see me for eight days at a time. I cry every Sunday and you see me just like, why? why? Well, I just like that there's women career politicians <laughs> who have the experience but then someone who was rubbing elbows. Yeah. They're like, I saw someone do it. Yeah. Basically the same thing. I used What's to do a bit t- on that. Should Tom Brady's <laughs> wife be the next quarterback of the Rams because he left some playbooks around? <laughs> no, but there's this new pressure that yeah. like that a first no, no. lady is actually a job. I know. And that they have the weight of the world. It's like, you don't. How about whenever it was like, why doesn't Oprah run for president? <laughs> just like, no, that is the worst. <laughs> I'm not going to name any names. But if through celebrities have thrown their fucking hat in the ring, it's just like, dude, do you understand that? Do you see how these people age? You know what that is? That's not the economy. That's the dead bodies. That's the dead babies that the drone hit. You don't. You yeah. You don't shake that off. This isn't just walking around Christmas trees. Yeah. The holidays. How much high of a fucking 
fame buzz are you looking for here that you want to stick? You're making some stupid fucking movie where yeah. a bunch of people die, but they don't die. And now you want to fucking actually do that for real. You want to do that. You want to fucking go. You want to have your finger on the nuke button. That's what you yeah. want. You're, no, you're out of your fucking mind. No, you want to do the parades. You want to get on the helicopter. They think that it's like the king and the queen. We don't have a king and a queen. <laughs> We have a president that actually is responsible for real shit. I think that I think that with all the like King and the uh, Kate Middleton and Prince, where I think. But we're- they're not running. I, I look at them like you know, like when I used to do a, a thing on this, where like when your flight gets canceled, yeah, and everybody yells at the person tearing the tickets, and they're like, "I never fly in your airline again." It's like my airline. Like that person is literally there to tear tickets right. and then get yelled at That's when job. shit goes wrong. That yeah. is their fucking, or it's at least part of the job. That's what the, the president is. That's it. That's Smile it. Smile and wave. And get blamed for fucking everything. everything. And there's people, yeah, like that. He makes he makes like fucking four hundred grand a year. It's not even that much money. They have to go. Speak. Yeah, there's like why they're speaking fifteen year old kids writing songs on YouTube make more fucking money than the president <laughs> of the United States. It's so true. You don't think he has to fucking answer to somebody? Get the fuck out of here. <laughs> anyway, you were talking about Sorry. the female pilot. Female pilot going into oh, yeah, so, uh, yeah, uh, so, Iowa. Oh yeah, so we flew in. Yeah, it was fucking great. Yeah, it was awesome. And uh, and I all geeking out looking at all the different things that they have to do because it's totally different. It's the same principles but completely different. Than helicopters? Yeah. Well, we can kind of stop in the air, and if they stopped, they'd be just fucking dead. And right. They have, like, the whole glide slope and the three degrees and all the shit that they have to fucking line up. <sighs> um, shit scares me. Yeah. And I'm... But I mean, yeah, I mean, yeah, it's. Uh, but the show is great. It's not for the faint of heart. <laughs> no, it's just. I <laughs> but we went there, and it's in like they have not changed it ever since they had it. So it's like stepping back in time. Uh, they changed the green room a little bit, but they had like they literally have like it locked. They have the phone booth where it's kind of morbid. Where Buddy Holly on the phone called his wife for the last time, and uh, it it was uh, yeah it was you know I don't know I I. Kind of ran out of stadiums to go to, so now I, I'm kind of on this music thing where I just try to go to like, like I'm doing this this venue in um, Memphis coming up, and uh, I'm a huge Stevie Ray Vaughan, Double Trouble fan, and um, Tommy Shannon, Chris Layton, Reese Winans. I fucking love that band, and I saw this this clip of them. A new clip kind of came up of some live stuff that in Memphis I'd never seen. And I was like, oh, wow, look, where are they playing in Memphis? It was like, oh, the Orpheum. Like, That's so cool. Where am I cool. going? It was like Orpheum. And they, they, they did redo it one time because I get really into that whole walking on the same. If they redid it, I don't give a fuck. But if you're walking on the same yeah. boards, yeah. you feel like that magic or that energy is somehow in there. And like my my last uh, stand-up thing I did, like I my favorite concert footage of Led Zeppelin and John Bonas, one of my favorite drummers, yeah. was in Royal Albert Hall. And like that was the big thing to get – you push did. through where I was like, this is where Robert Plant stood and John Bonham's drums were right fucking. I couldn't believe it. I couldn't. And it, and it still like kind of looks the same. So um, that's cool. Yeah, it was like, yeah, it gave me the chills. Is that recent? Is it is it sort of like, you know, as a stand up, you're like, OK, I'm selling out theaters. I'm selling out stadiums. You know, I'm Bill. I now- don't know. Kevin Hart stills out stadiums. I, I'm theaters. I, I, <laughs> MSG is not a game. Uh, the forum is a, you know, arenas, whatever. Um, and then it c- becomes about like, okay, the thrill is now that you can process all that or have gone through it. Now it's like, okay, I get to be in the presence of greatness. Uh, you, um, well, I, you try to still be a fan mm-hmm. and then you still try to improve and then you block out um, all compliments and criticism mm-hmm. except for the, your, you know, the, the people that you trust. Yeah. You know, if somebody's going, eh, you know, you're kind of doing this too much. I will, you know, if it's somebody I respect, I listen to, but I'm I'm not going to listen to, you know, some random person on social media. You have your go-to people that are like. Yeah. Telling me that a joke isn't funny or mm-hmm. like, because of, yeah, what the fuck do you know? I mean, what, what do you do for a living? Mm-hmm. Huh? You, you, you fucking build cars. I'm going to tell you, you put the transmission in the wrong way. <laughs> what the fuck do I know about it? You know, you do what you do. And I do what I do. You don't have to like it. <laughs> I have a friend uh, that I've known forever from Boston, uh, and he knew me before I did stand up. And he's the person I go to to run things by right. anything. And I show him specials. I show him everything because I know he'll always tell me the truth. Like, do you have that person in your life? Is it Nia? Yeah. Yeah, it is. When she finally gives it up, mm-hmm. you know, it's a wife's job. They got to fucking keep you. <laughs> Level and you away, trust away. you trust uh, her judgment. Yeah, on most stuff. But then this stuff, I'm just like, nah, you don't get it. 
<laughs> you don't get it. That's this funny. Isn't for you. I, I yeah, I believe it. <laughs> You're I know, not my demo. And I know what I'm doing with this, and I'm gonna get there. Like uh, I had a bit in my act that I'm doing right now. That the first time I did it, like two women started screaming at me, and I told them to go fuck themselves. And then they waited for me afterwards. It was a big fuck you, fuck you thing. And uh, you know, I cooled off like three days later. <laughs> And I was like, all right, that's not what I want to be doing when I'm up there. So I was like, I need to figure out how to say what I'm saying so people hear it. And now I'm doing that. And then that bit gets like the best and like a really positive. It it, it turned into like this more like, you know, when I really got down to what the fuck I was trying to say. Right. um, But you're chiseling at the marble. No, that's why people shouldn't like film comics and stuff and then just post it up there. I mean, if people do that, then you can't be like, it's like, this. it's a work. I'm fucking working on this shit. Yeah. It's not done yet. I didn't say it was done. Yeah. This is the, we're, there's no way to safely work out. Do you do the yonder bags to put people's phones in at shows? I haven't, but I, I, maybe I will. It all depends. Yeah. Like it's, it's upsetting when people do that. I don't think people do it maliciously. Yeah. I think they're actually doing it because they're a fan, but they don't realize how, they're ruining all the surprise endings to all your ideas. That's right. It's not like because uh, I because I would think a lot of them go to see bands and bands are, are cool. Yeah, man, get my music out there. Yeah. Um. um it's yeah. snitchy to me sometimes. I think a lot of people now. I think after the Louis thing with the the thing and the the Chappelle thing, they kind of, everyone wants to get the thing where a comic slips. You know, like they want. Yeah, to no, snitch. it's just like. Yeah, and it's just all of us. Like we're already out of bounds when we walk on stage. That's like right. that's what you're going to see. That's right. That's right. Now we're so, going to bust you going out of bounds. Right? I don't. I don't think that exists too yeah. much anymore. Yeah. They, they try to fucking. Someone was. I mean, t- think about how offended people were. Okay, about so much fucking shit in the last meeting. And where is that now? Nowhere. It it's, isn't. It's, it's just, ephemeral outrage. Yeah. It's a drug. I, mean, I don't even know what that word means, but uh, I'm going like, to agree with it. It's. <laughs> Ephemeral. <laughs> Ephemeral. What is that? Like it's just it's it's um uh, easily turned over. It's quick, oh, fast. There you go. It's here and then it's gone. It's like people are just like I, she didn't ride horses. That... <laughs> Ephemeral. I think we're. Addicted. I was poor. Ephemeral. <laughs> yes, I had to work fucking harder to try to go to college. I used to. I remember I was such a weirdo uh, in high school, and I hate it when people say that. I hate it when people are like, I was a nerd in high school, but I was just like I was just like a weird like loner. I'm just like lonery. And I used to read the dictionary and memorize, try to memorize words because I I didn't have an SAT tutor. So I, I would like memorize words. So that's oh, what. so you had to get you had to take the initiative. Yeah, I knew a woman like that a long time ago. Who? Well, I'm not gonna say her name, but oh, she I feel was, like I'm uh, similar to one of your exes. Uh, or no, something. she was. Uh, she was. She danced on Broadway, and I wasn't. I wasn't seeing her or anything. Yeah, but she like her. I remember the story was like her mother was like I think using or whatever. Yeah, and. She just got herself out of it because she figured out through other people what she needed to do. And she would yep. just come home and be like, Mom, sign this. Permit. That was me. Like, yep, sign right. this, sign this, yep. sign this. And she got the fuck out. And I, was, I, always, I always admired that. I was like, wow, I wonder if I would have had the wherewithal to do that. And I was like, probably not. <laughs> not for a while. I don't think I would have. Seem like she figured it out as a kid. When you come from alcoholic home, a lot of times you realize real quick, like, I'm the adult here. I need to run shit. Oh. You know? I was definitely doing that. I was, like, making lunches, making dinners, and I was like, I know I'm not going to get an SAT tutor. All the kids at school have a fucking tutor. <laughs> I need to tutor myself. I used to tutor. My brain went to a really bad place. It was one of those green room jokes I could have just said. What? <laughs> All right, it's a green room joke. I, was, I blew the landlord so could fucking... <laughs> I had to do all the adult shit. You know, keep, keep the fucking heat on. Keep the lights on. <laughs> Are you saying that children should... <laughs> um, last thing. Uh, are there any... Do you like meeting your heroes or not? Just curious. Uh, mostly. I feel like you do now. Mostly uh, they've been cool. Uh, the ones that I've met. I, I, I think a lot of people, what I've learned is yeah. that really successful people... Are fun to be around. That's right. Like if you're a fucking asshole, you you can get there 
but you you won't stay there. Yeah. Like there's there's this thing out there that you know that that's interesting. That, that theory, that feminist theory, that guys, you know, women have to be this way, and guy could just be a dick, and everybody respects him. It's like no, Not true. nobody wants to work for a fucking asshole, yeah. and when a fucking asshole starts to fall, yeah. nobody tries to catch him, yeah. and they let him all go down, and they enjoy every fucking yeah. branch they hit yep. on the way down. And I've seen that happen to plenty of fucking people. So, yep. um, I found that. Uh, the, the I've, I've yeah I've just found them to be really like uh, had a sense of humor about themselves mm-hmm. very humble yeah and uh, and had a little bit of a I don't know I don't know, I don't know why it there. happened to yeah. me yeah 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 so and then there's been uh, you know but I I find people that aren't that good are the ones who actually take the trip always T- take take the ride not always but I I think I, they I call it taking the ride yeah and they just kind of they get, get rid of their friends and they surround themselves. Uh, I, I used to joke with me. I used to call it. He's got a case of the yeah, yeah, yes. <laughs> everyone around's like yeah, 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 yeah. Good yeah, idea. yeah. <laughs> it's so true. I've seen it happen to my friends. I mean, I've seen it happen to a couple people, and I think that like maybe there's some comics that are getting like too famous off YouTube or something too quick, or so, and that starts to happen. There's an adjustment period, and then if they come out the other side, then it's then it's fine. I heard that. I think it was Bill Murray said one time. He used to give people three years. And he was like, after three years, if you're still an asshole, then you're an asshole. That's, but like, I, I thought that was really empathetic. That's genius. Like, all right, you know, he also, everybody's blowing smoke. He's floating up. We're going to see if he comes back down again. Three years <laughs> later, he's still up there. Yeah, fuck that guy. <laughs> <laughs> he also said something on Howard Stern that I loved uh, about fame. He said, uh, you know, Howard Stern was like, don't you love being famous? And he goes, try being rich and see if you still want to be famous. He says a lot of stupid to get that. (laughs) He's like a lot of people want to be famous, but they actually just want to be rich. Does that make any sense? Yeah, no, it totally does. Like a lot of people are like, I want to be famous, and you really you don't want to be famous and poor. But I didn't. I wanted to be famous. Famous. I got into. I wanted. I wanted to be known as a comedian. I definitely. Yeah, for sure. Me too. I think maybe this. I wanted to be, and I want all the people that I saw growing up. Mm -hmm. I wanted them to poke their head in and just say, "I saw your act, and you're funny." Mm -hmm. That's all I need. I didn't want to be like. You know, and then we're palling around. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No. Doing blow at the fucking comedy store. Mm-mm. I didn't have any desire for that. But I definitely, uh, I've been the opposite with money, where it's like I want to have enough. Yeah. So I'm not on the fucking street. But, like, I don't, like, uh, freak out about, you know, I could have gone across the street and got that for 40. I, I've never been that way even when mm. I was, uh, you know, coming up. You know, I, I never had that... Uh, Hanging on to it. Other than when I first moved to New York and I wasn't getting any spots and I didn't have a fucking day job and I built up a nest egg and just watching that thing going down yeah, yeah, every yeah, fucking yeah, yeah. month. <laughs> and I was, you know, during my, uh, you know, I was never a ramen noodle guy. I was just, I just ate pasta like every just, fucking <laughs> night, just filled myself <laughs> up with it. I still do that. What is, what it's works, cheap. what works on money for, like what, when you, I have a very weird relationship with money. I, it, but what, when you spend money on something, works? Like, yep, that felt good. Oh, I, I like... Uh, like sh- shoes, if watches. If there's something really of quality mm-hmm. that I really wanted and I need it. That want and, and need it. And, want and, and need it. Buying something really fucking cool for somebody that I know is going to appreciate it is, is the... Uh, is is the, is the best thing ever because I, I I don't want to get too much into my personal life with shit like that. But there was someone in my life that I I got him something and uh, like I got way more out of his fucking reaction. Oh uh, yeah, it was I love awesome. giving gifts. I'll show you the video when I when I go to leave. We talk about we've talked about money every episode because I'm obsessed with money because the first time I started making any money that year I was like I'm rich and then I couldn't afford my taxes. <laughs> I had no, oh yeah, I had yeah, no, yeah, and I had to do eighty cities. I did eighty colleges in one year to get money back because I had no idea how money worked. I had no yeah. idea. You give half away, you give more half. I mean, taxes and commissions and co- travel. I always look at it thirty. If you, if you get if you make a hundred thousand dollars, you're lucky if you get to keep thirty. 30. You're lucky. 30. You're lucky if you get to keep thirty because it's just. You know, it's a it's a broken system. That's right. And uh, the people up top are chewing and screwing, and they leave the check to whoever has fucking money and doesn't have high powered lawyers. And you just fuck, you just got to pay Elvis taxes. That's right. That's right. And then there's so, a lot of fake industry standards where you got to pay a bunch of people and the public and all the shit. And uh, 
And so I could, and so I always talk about just like saving money. The more money I have, the more I save it. And the people with the most money that I know are the cheapest people on the planet. And um, I don't really save money. No, I just make it, and then. But I don't buy a lot of shit. But yeah. I don't consciously like fucking save it. You have like a retirement or like a four hundred one k. No, I have that. Yeah, I have that, but I have it on the crap table. Like yeah, if I wish I could get it off the fucking crap table, which is the fucking stock market. Yeah, um, but I, I bought in. I'm in. I'm in on the lie. So I got. I got to ride it out. <laughs> I got to ride it out. But uh, I. Inv- I think I'm going to try to invest in that company where you see people texting comics. You've seen that when people like text me. Oh, that thing. That yeah. thing. Are you going to do that? Um, I try to stick with what I know. Yeah. <laughs> Somebody asked me yesterday to invest in some fucking thing. We're going to make a fucking zillion dollars, yeah. you know? You know, your napkin always fucking comes unfolded <laughs> when it falls in you. This fucking thing refolds it for you. All, All right. right. Well, We're I over still... time. Okay. We're over time, and I don't want to keep it. All right. Well, thank you so much Thank you. I hope this me. wasn't a total hassle for you. wasn't a hassle, man. I had a good time. Oh, good. I had a good time. Thank you, and uh, good luck with working on your anger. <laughs> I'm going to do I'm still working on mine. F is for family. F is Watch for family it. and uh, The Mandalorian. Mandalorian. Holy shit. The Star Man- Wars. Mandalorian. When does that come out? It's uh, it's streaming now. Right now, I think they the fourth episode might have just dropped. But Holy that's shit. how much content is out there that you're like Star Wars. When is that coming out? It's, it's been our, out. It's been out. Well, I hear about it, and a lot of people um, texting me about it or uh, ask me questions about it. But I I felt bad asking you about like all your projects, so I didn't bring it up. No, it doesn't bother me. Doesn't bother me. Dave, but, uh, Dave it's loves on, it. It's on Disney Plus. Disney Plus. Which I'm loving as a parent because they got all the Disney cartoons on there, too. Built-in babysitter. And the old cartoons, the old animation is my favorite. Yeah. We were watching 101 Dalmatians last night. Although I rewatched Bambi, and that made me sad. I can't believe kids watch that shit. That's because Walt's fucking mom died, so now everybody has to go through his fucking pain. is that what it was? Yeah, and that's like the thing. Like, the fucking Lion King's the same goddamn shit. Why is it so sad? I can't handle it. How are kids? I watched The Good Dinosaur on a plane, and I had to take a walk. Up and down. I couldn't that's, hold That's their thing. They have to fucking rip you, you, your kid's heart out so you'll stay to the end of the movie. I think that that's what they do. Or it's a way to force your kid to appreciate your parent. Your parent's alive. Stop yelling at them. Or maybe Disney hates children. <laughs> this is a two-part podcast, everybody. <laughs> now it's going to get real, like that stand-up special that person did, where it was joke, joke, jokes, and then like, and now here's all the pain behind it. Ah! Don't do that. I don't want to know the truth behind this. I signed up for comedy. Don't do that to me. It's a bait and switch. People can't handle that. That's not fair. Counter programming within the thing. You make a joke about your dead dog and this is how my dog died. <laughs> That's like what I told you about the coyote. I, I feel like I took candy from a child. I shouldn't have joked about it. You know, I, I, I'm, I'm not fucking shitting on the person that did that. I'm just... It's just, I don't know, it fed into what the fuck I was just doing. We can Sorry. cut it out. You can tell us to Please cut, cut that out. Cut it out. Cut We're going to cut that out. You don't need any drama in your life. Cut it out, man. You have enough drama in your life. All right. This is what you come back on. We just edited out some <laughs> shit that I didn't want you to see. All right. Mandalorian, Disney Plus, That's Netflix, right. F is for Family, Thank for you. Tiger. You get it. 